Today we'll cover a ton of Elixir syntax in less than five minutes, then look at how to write basic scripts. Let's get started. We'll be working from the Elixir REPL. We'll start by covering basic syntax. First, let me introduce atoms. Atoms are constants. Their name is their value. Booleans are true and false. What's interesting is they're just syntactic sugar for the corresponding atoms. In Elixir, you have two types of numbers, integers and floats. You can add them. Notice that the return value of an operation containing a float is also a float. You can subtract them, you can multiply, and you can divide. Note that division always returns a float. If you need an integer, you want to use the div function. And if you want the remainder, there's the rem function. Strings are surrounded by double quotes. You can join them together with the concatenation operator. I'm not really sure what to call this. Strings also support interpolation. Elixir also has unbelievably good support for Unicode in strings. Let's talk about pattern matching. If I do this, you probably think assignment. But if that's assignment, what is this? This is pattern matching. Elixir will bind a variable to perform pattern matching if possible. And so it can be used a lot like assignment. But it's not the same thing. We'll look at that again momentarily. Tuples are a fixed size collection of terms. You can create a tuple with curly brackets and commas, like this. Here, we've created a two-tuple. Tuples are implemented with contiguous areas of memory, so accessing them is fast. You can use the elem function for that. You can also replace an element in a tuple with put elem. I just turned 34, so we can fix that. This brings us to immutability. I just modified the person variable, right? Not exactly. Put elem and anything that appears to mutate a value instead returns a new value. In Elixir, there is no mutation. Very frequently, tuples are used alongside pattern matching. Oftentimes, functions will return one of these two things. We'll talk more about that tomorrow, but I wanted to call this out. These two tuples are used to allow pattern matching for success and failure trivially. There are a few collection types we care about. Lists, keyword lists, and maps. Lists are implemented as length lists. That means that the time it takes to traverse the list is proportional to the length of the list. It also means that you can't tell how long a list is without traversing the whole thing. You can build a list in place. You can also append to a list. Here I'm pushing a 1 into the front of the list 2, 3. A single element list is the same as an item appended to the empty list. If you're just prepending elements to a list, it's very fast. This is because it just consists of a new list where the tail points to the existing list in memory. There's no need to copy any data. The first item in a list is known as its head, and the rest is known as its tail. You can get them from a list with the two functions hd and tl, or head and tail. Something to be aware of with lists is that they're used to store character lists, or char lists. These are a common stringy type used in Erlang, but less frequently used in Elixir. They're produced by surrounding characters in single quotes. One important thing to note about this is that these are represented by lists of integers that correspond to their ASCII codes. Consequently, lists that only contain integers in the range of printable ASCII codes are a bit confusing the first time you see them printed out. Here we can see those are the same thing. When specifying a small set of options, it's common to use keyword lists. These are lists of two tuples where the first element is an atom, but they're usually written like this. You can fetch particular elements out with the following syntax. Except when handling options, you'll typically want to use maps instead. Maps have better lookup semantics than keyword lists as they aren't implemented as linked lists. Here's how you can create a map. They can be accessed with the same syntax as keyword lists or by using a dot followed by the field name. Elixir has first class support for regular expressions. You create a regular expression with the R sigil. A sigil is just a tilde followed by a single character. And of course Elixir is a functional language so it has first class support for anonymous functions. Let's define one. To call an anonymous function you must use a dot between the function and its arguments. And that's it for our survey of the basics of Elixir syntax. We'll cover more as we run across it, but this should get you started pretty well. Now let's look at basic scripting in Elixir. To make a script, create a file that ends in .exs. Here we'll use io.puts, which outputs to the console. And now you can run the script with elixir foo.exs. That's just a basic rehashing of what we've already done though, albeit with a script to hold our code. In today's episode, we covered most of the basic syntax of Elixir. Tomorrow we'll look at the mix tool, creating modules, defining functions in modules, pattern matching, and using the pipe operator. See you soon.